It's no secret that as car enthusiasts, we're pretty passionate about our cars. And you know, when your buddies get together, silly things tend to happen. So when my buddies Gears and Gasoline said, we want to challenge you to a drag race, the only answer to give them was, son of a gun, I'm in. And big thanks to Advanced Auto Parts for sponsoring this entire series. This is episode three of a four part series to see who's faster in the quarter mile, a JDM car, or a European car with a maximum budget of $5,000. The JDM car we're up against is an 89 Civic with unknown modifications. Our car for this challenge is a 2007 Jetta with a two liter turbo and a DSG transmission. I bought this car with a broken timing belt. Paul and I replaced all eight intake valves, upgraded the turbo, upgraded the fuel system, then brought it to the dyno to see how much power it made. All right, 253 at the wheels. 309 at the wheels. That is not enough power <laughs> to beat a Honda Civic. Whatever could we do to get more power? Let's try it with nitrous. Okay, for the nitrous kit, I went with a nitrous express proton kit that had an adjustable nitrous delivery anywhere from like 35 to 150 shots. Here is our nitrous and fuel solenoid pack. We tapped into the low pressure fuel side off the low pressure side of the high pressure fuel pump, which made it nice and easy because it threaded right onto that fitting. We just had to remove the Schrader valve. Fuel and nitrous from the back is carried to these solenoids. Then from that solenoid pack, to our intake pipe. Now that's our noise pipe deletion pipe from a Passat. We just drilled the hole and sent the nozzle through there. So nitrous and fuel are gonna be injected into our air intake stream. The nitrous has an arm switch right here and then it's activated by a button attached to the steering wheel. And possibly my favorite part of the whole system, the nitrous tank mounted in the trunk. Perfect spot to mount a big old nitrous tank. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, so back to the dyno, and let's see if we can make this happen or if our car blows up. Our bottle is open. My prediction, either we're gonna get 100 horsepower, ECM's gonna shut us down, the car's gonna blow up. No middle ground of those three things. Moment of truth, I, fire extinguisher's um, ready. I think, I think we're pretty, both pretty nervous I about this situation. super nervous. This is our first nitrous experience. Here we go. I'm very nervous. Me too. He was right. Yeah, that's a hole in the box. Yeah, that is. Let me go get some pig mats. And while we get the dyno cleaned up from our unintended rapid engine disassembly, let's talk about what we could have done differently to possibly prevent catastrophic engine damage. Number one, we could have jetted our nitrous kit for less nitrous. We had it jetted for a hundred shot of nitrous, which typically is a rating of how much horsepower to the wheels this setup should deliver. Our setup never reached its full horsepower potential, but we did hit 130 pound feet of torque over what we ran without the nitrous. So perhaps that jetting calculation isn't super accurate. Two, we could have ran a progressive nitrous controller. We had this setup ran on a button, so it was all nitrous or no nitrous. A progressive controller will ramp up to 100 shot of nitrous, delivering it a little bit slower and more controlled. If we would have done that, the engine may have held together. And finally, if we had the budget, we could have done a full built bottom end and probably prevented some of that engine damage. I guess in the end, it doesn't really matter. And let's be honest, that explosion was awesome. Unfortunately, now we gotta push the car back on the trailer and figure out what we're gonna do now. And as our luck would have it, we have one week before race day. All right, so we blew up the, <laughs> the GLI. We gotta talk to Gears and Gasoline and see if they're gonna be awesome. So Tom, from Everything Euro, uh, which is where we're at now, which is where we blew up the GLI, has a couple of cars that uh, are options. They're, they're super good options. Yeah, so, they're in disrepair currently. Not yeah, all of them are is, 
<laughs> All of we them are broken, but that's that's okay. That's what we do. So we have a B8 S4 that needs some transmission work, which is a pretty great car to have, other than being heavy. And we have this All Road, which needs some work too. Uh, I think the B8's the better option, even if it needs a transmission. Three liter supercharged. Uh, Tom said fifteen hundred bucks. We would then need a trans, dual pulleys, yep. and tuning. Yeah. You got some thinking to do. I got some thinking to do. Fifteen hundred bucks. What do, what do we figure transmissional costs used? I don't know. I think you can probably get a trans for like a thousand bucks. So that's twenty five hundred. Then dual pulley. The pulleys themselves are not that expensive. It's the tuning that usually is. So we'd have to talk to Ian about tuning. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, where's the? I don't think it requires going very far. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I told you it wasn't very good. What are we talking about? Uh, no reverse. Oh, there we go. There it is. Maybe it just needs fluid. Just, just needs service, probably. This is the kind of thing that you see on Facebook Marketplace. Just needs a transmission service. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got some pretty good options, but before I can make any decisions, I got to get this Jetta back to the shop and off the trailer. We're back home with the Jetta. I think the parking brake's hung up. Let's get it torn apart, see how bad that damage is. My first goal is just going to be getting the oil pan down and out of the way. That'll give us really probably the best picture of some of the damage that happened when this engine went kaboom. How bad it is, I don't know, but I'm very excited to get this pan down. What's off? <laughs> there's just, <laughs> I think there's carnage inside of here preventing this pan from coming off. <laughs> it's just a matter of prying it off. Oh yes. I mean, at least if your engine's gonna come apart, <laughs> that is awesome. Wow, wow, wow. 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 <laughs> well, you saw all the parts falling, that's fun. Now we got our chain off, we get these last couple of bolts that either aren't destroyed. Well, that weirdly wasn't tight. I mean, not weirdly at all. Look at this whole thing, just chilling. All the gears of the balance shaft are just hanging out in there. Oh gosh, ah, that was that piece I was trying to get out. Look at that, look at that bad boy. Yeah, buddy, oh man. Oh gosh, not only, <laughs> this is apparently one of those like getting around corner balls. <laughs> look at that, that's amazing. Oh man, this is fun. This is very fun. Let me take the pickup tube off. Oh man, right on my drill. Okay, yeah, here we go. All right, well, I think it's pretty obvious that we had a connecting rod break. At least one, maybe more than one. Here's more of our balance shaft just hanging out. Let's take this part down. Yeah, juicy. That juice, ah, it juiced me again. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> Cylinder two said, uh uh, uh uh. Uh -uh. Hole back here through the block. Oh, that's real nice. Let's see if we can rotate the engine around maybe. I feel like now we might be able to. I tried to crank it before, but it was it was a no-go. Oh, there we go. We can go a little backwards. Normally you'd never want to rotate an engine backwards, but well, there's some kind of compression. You can hear it. Oh, there's a chunk of piston stuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I sure, I, I wonder if we can salvage the head. See if now we can rotate it around. There's something back here, it feels like preventing that from happening. Maybe it's, maybe it's this. Here's the top of the connecting rod. <laughs> well, this is what it looked like. A hundred shot of nitrous through a two liter turbo BPY engine makes for a very sad day. So I'm actually gonna do a full teardown video on this at some point so we can see the true damage of like the cylinder walls and that. But really, I gotta put this pan back on, get this car outside because we gotta figure out what the heck we're gonna do for this dang drag race. But I thought that I would like to show you guys and I wanted to see too, 
just how bad our catastrophe really was. Okay, so clearly not an ideal outcome for our poor drag race Jetta. However, that carnage is pretty cool. I need to jump on the phone with Gears and Gasoline and, and see what we can do. <laughs> I think I heard you scream at the end. <laughs> that sounds like a bunch of rocks in a blender. <laughs> As you guys saw, uh, we, we didn't have the greatest day on the dyno. What you saw there, and you can really see like the RPM ramp up, and then like the car jump on the dyno. I really wish, I didn't want to share this with you guys uh, until we were at the track. That was a hundred shot of nitrous through that engine. So um, it hit about 140 pound feet of torque over what we had just ran the run before without the nitrous. One, I wanted to share that with you. Uh, two, I, I'm, I'm sort of like, seeing where we're at with maybe kicking the timeline down so I could find another engine or a, another we already, car. We booked the track, dude. It's we have, next we have, week. Yeah, we got five days. Yeah. I know, I know. Believe me, like, I don't really want to push this car across the, like, a quarter of a mile. Tell me, Charles, how many times did you watch Fast and Furious before you decided to modify your car. <laughs> Bro, too, the too soon, Junior. I, I went full send, as they say, and, and you you see the results. So I'm, I'm here uh, hoping we could get it worked out for this race in five days that I don't have a car that runs. Sure, but I need to savor this moment a little bit mm -hmm. more first because mm -hmm. uh, the European yeah. car has already blown up before mm -hmm. the race even happened. I think that means we win by default regardless. <laughs> Just... Just drink it in. Just yeah, let yeah. it all drink it in. German cars are pretty reliable till you don't maintain them or start screwing with them. Right. Uh, this one had suffered a life of poor maintenance, and then I started screwing with it. How much did it make before you injected a bomb into it? It was at three, roughly 310 torque and 250 to the wheels. And this was supposed to be a surprise at the track, right? This is a white Jetta. So I bought all the white Jetta Fast and Furious graphics we were going to put on the car. We, I got, I got cans of plastic dip to get the wheels white. I got vinyl to do the headlights to match. You know, he dies in the movie. <laughs> not right away. Like not in the race. The, ga the gang shoots him up afterwards. I was hoping I could get out of town before that happened. What do we do from here? I'm, I'm willing to just, just say you guys won. Uh, I, I'm, I am not happy about that, but obviously, uh, what's fair is fair. So that's, that's not cool. That's not a good way to end the series. Yeah. We need to visually beat a Euro car. Yeah. Um, we need to, we need to actually walk away from yeah. one. Do you, can you find a new car in five days? I think so. Is it going to work? I don't know. Maybe it will work is better than what you have right now. You're good with me. So like reset of the budget. Although now we're on a time crunch, which was awesome to not be under before, because ultimately we still want to race. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll just call it. We'll start back at zero for you. Just do what you can in five days. That's a bigger restriction now than the budget. <laughs> we're gonna forget that this happened entirely. You're never gonna forget that this happened ever. <laughs> no, don't no, don't no. even lie. Trust us, Charles. We'll never bring it up again. Okay. So they were cool about us picking a new car, which is insanely awesome. Now. I actually have found a car. I think we're gonna go with that S4 that Tom had up at his place with the transmission issues. So time to hit the road. Okay, I made it home. Three hours to get this transmission, another hour and a half to pick up the S4, and then another two hours home. But we got all the parts that hopefully we need to get this replaced. So let's get this transmission out, then we'll get the S4 in, shake it down and talk about some of these transmission Hail Marys that we're gonna try and pull off. This is a 2010 S4 with 212,000 miles on it that Tom, the owner of Everything Euro, bought from a customer because it has transmissions issues. So big ups to Tom from Everything Euro for coming in clutch right after we blew up the Jetta. Something else that worked out really awesome is before I picked the car up, I had Ian from Reflect Tuning, who also tuned the GLI, throw an ECM and a DSG tune on the S4. So the engine computer and transmission computer are tuned. Let's hope we can actually get it fixed. Since we're doing this repair as part of this drag race series, I'm not gonna do a step-by-step -step video on how to replace this wiring harness. If that's something you guys wanna see, you think would be valuable, let me know because I did film all of that footage. There's a brace that runs across the bottom of the transmission pan that we need to remove. We're gonna drain all the DSG fluid. Then we can remove the transmission pan and unbolt our mechatronics unit. Even though there's all these bolts, 
It's only held in with like five or six bolts. Once the mechatronic unit is down, we can remove our old wiring harness. This is actually the first time I've done this wiring harness on this transmission. So what I wanted to do is spend a few minutes ohming out each solenoid inside the mechatronic unit. I couldn't find any specifications or anything like that, but I figured if I had one that was way out, at least I would know it. And remember kids, ohming out a component, not always the best way to test the component. But since I had it out and this is super quick, I figured I'd give it a shot. There's a couple of things that happen inside these mechatronics units. One, the fluid is corrosive and can actually damage the solenoids and the wiring harness in the mech unit. You can actually see a little bit of that discoloration here. Two, the solenoids in the mechatronic unit can also fail. And then of course the wiring harness, which has been proven to be an issue on this generation Audi, if any of those issues go unrepaired, this can lead to a more severe transmission issue that can result in either needing a DSG clutch pack or complete transmission replacement. The harness runs about $550 and Paul shipped that to me overnight so that I'd have it today. This is kind of step one in trying to get this transmission fixed. If this fixes it, great. If not, we have that whole other transmission that we can swap parts from. Once we get that new harness bolted back on, we put our mechatronics unit back in, bolt it up, bolt our pan up, and then we can put that brace back on. Now, if you're doing this job yourself, you wanna make sure you're replacing the gasket for the trans pan and probably the hardware that we took out. Once we get everything bolted back up, we do an initial fill of fluid, then start the car up, put some more fluid in it. Then when the transmission temperature gets to 35 degrees Celsius, I'm looking for a small stream of fluid coming out. Once I see that, I can go ahead and plug the transmission up. We're gonna jump into the scan tool. We're gonna do our clutch adaptations. I'm using the procedure listed out on Ross Tech's wiki page. It's one of my favorite sites for VW Audi stuff. We're also using their scan tool. Such an amazing part of the community. I'll link them up. Now that we got all that done, let's test drive it and cross our fingers and see what happens. Well, looks like the transmission's coming out. We're back in action. Paul is with us today, back from doing real work like adults do. I already gave you the bad news that the mech unit wiring harness didn't fully fix our thing. So our goal today is to pull the transmission and swap some clutches. So the assumption is driven too long with a failing uh, harness, killing the clutch. And now we need to do the thing that we didn't want to have to do, but now we have to do it. We're four days away from the race. So it's not like hyper crunch. All right, our plan is to first get the clutch pack out of our transmission on the bench. Now, it would be cool if we could just pull this clutch pack right off, but this axle shaft actually runs all the way through. We can't pull this off with this axle guy here in the way. So we need to get this off. Oh, wiggle it. Oh gosh, how heavy is that? Not that heavy. Oh, my finger. There she is. Oh yeah, that actually wasn't too bad. Would you just look at it? Look at, you can see all inside that pretty transmission. Right now, Charles and I are taking off the cowl. Mostly he's working, I'm talking. Mm -hmm. And we are doing this so that we can remove the transmission from this car. All the bolts on the top side here, you have to get to, including the catalytic converter, which if you're not familiar, I had a lot of struggle related to a starter video that I made. Is that the one you caught on fire? That Almost caught on fire, my car. Oh, look at all that room. I know, I told oh, you. I love it. So much room for activities. Awesome. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> there. Johnny race car. Vroom, vroom. Okay, so we have the majority of the stuff out to get the transmission out. All the bolts are out. So far, we are making pretty good time. Decent I would time. say about what I expected. We got this big beastie. Beastie boy out of the car. How do you feel about that? I feel pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good too. So what we need to do next is we need to get this driver's side axle out because it runs through this, uh, the dual mass flywheel. Then we're gonna pull our clutch packs out and see how it looks. Oh, oh we got it. Yahtzee. All right. You well, don't need any special tools. Go ahead Perseverance. And, uh... <laughs> Stubbornness, <laughs> stupidity. Okay, here is our little UFO clutch dealie. We need to get this top cover off because I am super duper curious to see what happened. And I'm really hoping these clutches are toast. There's a snap ring here. Oh, that came out real nice. Hey. All right. Oh, it stinks. It does smell really bad. Bro, I yeah. am pretty confident. This guy is toasty. These are toasty, guys. So you can see a bit of discoloration on that top one. Whoa, look at all the discoloration inside these drums. Oh, wow. snap, yep. Look at this. That guy is some moat. Oh man. How are you feeling about seeing this like so trash? I feel so much better. <laughs> so look at all that 
discoloration. Oh my gosh, look at how hot that got. Oh God. Wow. That's it. That's how long it's been slipping for. Yep. So I think our theory of driving while just in limp mode um, for an extended period of time is probably spot on. Bro. Oh, that's, that's, oh my gosh. Can you see that on screen? Uh, yes. Okay. So look at how hot spotted this is. Wow. There's all these areas of hot spots everywhere. So normally this piece would just be like a bright shiny metal like ring. It would look yeah. like this. Like it would look just like that. But holy cow. Yeah, so here's look at comparison. All that. Even here's this one's lay, actually a little bit hot spotted, but lay it side by side. Turn it up a little bit. There you go. Whoa. That's even awesome. there's even like blueing Dude, all of them in the all friction. Of them are burned up. Look at that. Wow. Oh, they look like they're getting worse. Yeah, it does. Here's another example. So comparison side by yeah. side. So like this is clutch one, and then this is clutch two. You can kind of see how like this one's brown and this one's almost black. Oh man, I feel so good about that. So, we are I am riding, we are gonna win this thing as well. I am I, riding I high. See. This is cool. I've I'm never excited. seen one of these so just, so overall sad. Oh man, that's great. So now, I think, <laughs> I think we can feel good about uh, our diagnosis and let's put these back together. Is that the right orientation? It is. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, also, I think it kind of goes without saying throughout this entire job that some of what we're doing is not the ideal way to do this. Buzz! I have a calibrated torque arm, so it automatically knows. Get in there. There's no, because it can't move. It's, it's captive in the middle. Yeah. Stuck in the middle with Hugh. Stuck in the middle with you. Thumbs up, sports. Okay, so we got the car back together, mostly. We left a couple things off, but I, that's insignificant. I blew the faults out that we stored from before. We have to top off the DSG fluid. We have to do our clutch adaptations, but really we gotta let the car run for about 20 minutes before anything else. So uh, it either worked or it didn't at this point, but I'm optimistic. What's your percentage on go, no go? 95%. He's a 95 percenter. Paul's a little more optimistic than I am, but really? I feel like it's better than that. I think I think what we can agree on is those clutches were destroyed. Hopefully that's all and we don't find anything more. Whew. That's that's that old chain tensioner. Ah. I forgot the stop button it doesn't work. <laughs> You're not supposed to install a, an automatic a DSG. <laughs> This is not normal. I think it's a solenoid stuck in gear would be my guess. Maybe we do the adaptation, it'll get happy. All right, we're gonna try reverse after the adaptations. Actually, we're gonna try drive first. Good. <laughs> not good. Not good. Paul's 95% optimism <laughs> is, is fail. After the car shut off several times when we put it in reverse, we finally got the clutch adaptations to run, the basic settings to run, and the car not to die when we put it in reverse. We took it on a test drive to get a feel for how the transmission was behaving. It was a hundred times better than it was before we did that clutch pack. However, it's definitely not as good as it should be. Since we don't have a ton of time left and we still need to do things like replace the supercharger pulley, this might be as good as it gets. All right, talk about a whirlwind of craziness that just happened. While I'm pretty sure our S4 here is not completely fixed, I think for right now anyway, the transmission is as good as it's gonna get. We reset the budget back to $5,000, and here's where we stand right now. I paid $1,500 for the car. The wiring harness was about $550. The used transmission I got from JXB Performance, $600. And luckily, Ian was able to tune the S4 before I picked it up, and charge me $1,000. So we're sitting at $3,650 that we spent so far, which leaves us $1,350 left. We still have to get our crank pulley and our supercharge pulley on and a couple of other things before race day. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if the S4 is gonna even hold up, 
to the extra power that we're putting through a shaky transmission. But as of right now, we got three days before our race. We got a little bit of money to spend and hopefully, hopefully we can pull it off. And you're for sure not gonna wanna miss what happens in episode four. Weight reduction, bro. Yay. This guy is way heavier than you would think. That tab is officially That's broken now. Sorry, we're in that shot for you, dude. You got a broken car, man. Yeah, broken car. Well, right. not working car. Wow.